So here at this strip mall, just outside of Orlando, Florida, you are going to find one of the coolest reptile shops. This is Imperial Reptile. So I'm heading into Imperial Reptiles. I'm gonna give you guys a tour of one of the coolest reptile shops here in Central Florida. And there's also a couple of guest stars in there. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. <gasps> Whoa, look at this place. They even have a cat, Aaliyah. <laughs> and she's gone. And I'm here again. What, how weird is it to see you here? I know, it's crazy. Like, I mean, who would have thought? Like, it's all places. not like we planned this or anything. I know. You I mean, literally just flew in like yeah. 15 minutes ago. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And this is Chuck over here. Chuck is going to give us a tour of this amazing place. We've got Yoshi over here. We've got Alex over here. And then Dan the Turtle Man, he's, I, in, the he's, he's in the bathroom playing with turtles, I suppose. So yeah. he'll come out later. But yeah, I mean, look at this. So how long have you guys been set up here? That's a question for him. Right? Yeah, man, here going on four years now. Four years. Yeah. We came up here from Miami a couple years ago. We were trying to expand and we were always doing the reptile expos and they always did really good here. Yeah. My mom's lived here for 12 years. So I said, let's move to Central Florida and uh, try it out. All right, so let's do a tour of this place from one end to another. You showed me something before I turned on this camera that was super cool, yeah. and it's right down there. Let's check that out. Yeah, so this guy here, uh, as soon as I saw him, this is the first time I've ever seen him was at this shop. Uh, I think it is a very interesting animal, especially for people that don't know the exist, like myself at the beginning. But this here Whoa. is a shield-tailed agama. These guys come from Africa, and they have this weird look to them. It's like a bearded dragon and a Euromastic got pushed in together and got this weird tail with this uh, bearded dragon face that have all those blues and that tail is very good protection now you might be thinking why is it circular in that way well they have these little burrows so whenever a prey a predator comes around they run to that burrow and they leave that tail as a door that's right so they close it down and those predators can't grab them and that's why they look so funky they because are funky monkeys and he is really appreciating the handling there uh yeah for sure yeah they're extremely fast as well. Okay, those are just like the coolest lizards ever. And there's a lot of other species that kind of have that trapdoor tail like that. But these are just really cool little agamas. And what do you have these priced at? So these guys are 350. 350. All right, let's put them back in. All right, that's a cool looking dude. I love those guys. Let's move on to something else cool. So up here, we've got all sorts of amazing bearded dragons. We've got one down there. We've got a few down there. But over here, we've got something, dare I say, cooler than a bearded dragon. Uh, bearded dragons are cool, don't get me wrong. But in here, there's something even more amazeballs. So this here is a Sudanese plated lizard. So you guys can see they get their name from all the plates. They're usually always shedding. They have all these osteoderms on their backs. That's right, just yeah. like a crocodile. Yeah, yeah, very, very protective. Now, whenever they run away from predators, these guys go towards rocks for the most part uh, to get away from predators. And I do agree, these guys are way cooler than bearded dragons, uh, similar diet for the most part. But also look at this coloration, the feel of them is pretty insane. And look at all the shed going yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, very, very energetic and very easy to keep uh, in comparison to the bearded dragon. Uh, they don't get as heavy. They're slender animals, very quick. And yeah, very, very, very cool animals. So in the middle here, we've got all of our dry goods. We've got tons and tons of stuff for all your reptiles. And then we move over here and Let's see. we've got some cool arachnids over here. Yeah, so we have arachnids back here. That is an Asian forest scorpion there. Often confused for the emperor scorpion, but they stay a lot smaller. Right. Have a little bit more of an attitude to them for the most part. Uh, but incredible animals just like the emperor for sure. And then we've got this whole wall. Yes. And uh, wow, we got a lot of cool stuff in there. Look at this hypo hog island boa. Hog island boas are my favorite, but hypo, we gotta check this out. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. So hog island boas are from an island off the coast of Nicaragua and they are very light colored boas to begin with but then you add hypo and holy buckets, look at that. It's very bright, look at that tail. 
Yeah, that's like pumpkin orange. <laughs> yeah, don't eat it now. Beautiful animals for sure. That certainly is. Now, where are you getting most of your uh, stock from? Are you breeding it? Do you have a breeding facility No, here? we do work with different local breeders, uh, especially local. We love lo working with our local people. Sure. Uh, so just people that are breeding this stuff locally, other breeders from other parts of the country. Uh, we do export some of the animals and import them into the country as well. So gotcha. all over the place. Gotcha. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, ball pythons and shipping them down here oh, for yeah, you because I got a lot of them. <laughs> All right, so that was a really cool boa. What else do we have in here to see? Okay, something weird. Oh, look at this beautiful. bad boy. <laughs> that is a beautiful golden eye. Head albino? I'm not sure on yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. one is het negative. You can tell that it's het T negative just by looking at, well, that sign right there. <laughs> Is what you can do. Yeah, you can't tell by looking at the snake. Look at that color on that thing. That I haven't seen this one in a minute. You know, I'm telling you, blood pythons and short-tailed pythons, they really need a boost in popularity because they are just absolutely amazing pythons and they always get overshadowed by boas, mm -hmm. retics, ball pythons. I think also there's a, there's a misconception of them being usually very, very bitey, but like anything, if you work with it, you're able to be handling those animals with well, time. They, and that's right. I mean, they did have a reputation of being springs with teeth. Yeah. But those were primarily wild caught individuals. And now that we have captive breeding initiatives, they really are just as gentle as ball pythons can be. So very underrated. So hopefully people stop thinking of them as these evil beings and, you know, that reputation will pass. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. But look at that golden eye, just like James Bond. There was a James Bond movie called Golden Eye, wasn't there? I didn't sound stupid there, uh, did I? I think it was a video game. Video game? Video game? Yeah. Not a, not a movie? I don't think like so. I don't 64. know, man. All right, guys, comment below. Was there a James Bond movie called Golden Eye, or was it just a video game? It has nothing to do with reptiles, but comment below anyway, because now I'm kind of curious. All right, so right down here, we have got a Madagascar blonde hognose. These are found in the south part of the island that I did not get to, unfortunately, so I just have to... Cheat? Ask you to pull him out and take a look, not <laughs> cheat. <laughs> <laughs> look at that guy. There. Oh man, you know hog noses are probably the most popular colubrid, but you know the Madagascar hog noses often get overlooked. Yeah, they're very, very different, especially the giants and all. Yeah. Those. Well, the giants are my faves. Yeah. These are probably the second favorite for Madagascar hog nose snakes. There's also the speckled. The speckled are cool yes. too. Yes, absolutely. Oh I mean, all of the Madagascar hog noses are cool, but. I mean, Madagascar in general yeah, at this Madagascar point. Madagascar <laughs> was cool, but there's something about a good old awesome Madagascar blonde hog nose that is just awesome. Did I just say awesome? I think I just said Show awesome. It's snakes. awesome. Show me your snakes. Can you explain what's going on here? Um. This is Batman. Batman. Hello, creature. Batman. <laughs> oh, I must learn everything about you. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. We just pulled out this big old giant Madagascar hog nose snake. And if you guys remember the video that I shot in Madagascar, you'll remember how absolutely common these were in the wild. And these are just amazing. Look at this dude. And not only is this a giant Madagascar hognose, it is in fact Batman approved. <laughs> Soft loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give that back to you reluctantly. Uh, so let's see some more colubrids. You've got some really awesome Honduran milk snakes in okay. here. Okay, it's not October yet, but tell me you wouldn't choose this snake as October's snake. This snake is just Halloweeny. That Tell is me Halloweeny. Now, right? It's just ha Halloweeny. Look at this thing. It this is pumpkin right here. That is. Like this should be celebrated. There should be a day for this snake, and I'm mad there isn't a day for him. Well, if you ask me, every day should be Halloween. Oh, huh? you're not wrong. Huh? I mean, you're not uh -huh. wrong. You're not wrong. But look at look at this thing. Oh, what, uh, oh hey, wait, wait, ding, 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 ding. Hey, where you? Okay, come here. Come I here, think he's here. a cobra. Come here, sweetheart. Is it venomous? Yes. What what do, what do you do if it bites you? Mm, well, you admire him just a little bit more because that's the last thing you're going to do. <gasps> just kidding. Dun, dun, dun. No, these are absolutely not venomous. As a matter of fact, these are coral snake mimics, and mm -hmm. that is what that coloration is. The ones that you'll find in the wild are tricolored, and they have red, white, and black, and they actually mimic coral snakes in their area. 
And thanks to Captive Breeding Initiatives, we can have all of these really amazing colors. He wants to come to me. There we go. But thanks to Captive Breeding Initiatives, we can have all of these amazing morphs and all of these amazing colors like this guy. Man, what an amazing snake. Batman, do we like this snake? I love snakes. Huh? I love snakes. Huh? Um, I only have one hand. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Batman, you take that snake. Let's move on. Alright, what do we got in door number what? I've lost count. Five? I don't know. Something like that. Alright, what do we got? Do you know anyone with a derpy face? With a derpy face? Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do know somebody with a derpy face. Well, we're naming this snake after him. Look at that thing. Oh, a shovel no, nose snake. That. Look at this derpy dude. Yeah, so it's a shovel nose. Uh, they use it to dig for the most part. The scale of the mouth is very, very long in comparison to many other other snakes. So it's like a backwards hog nose snake. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> so this is really interesting because not a lot of reptile shops are going to have something this unique. Yep. And this specialized. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, with animals like this, a lot of them end up being imported. So we recommend people that are experienced or are willing to do everything possible to keep these animals in captivity. That way we could work with these animals and have captive born animals absolutely. instead of importing animals. That guy's feeding on mice, uh, specific care. We bring in a lot of like weird species, uh, weird colubrids that are for more of like the intermediate keeper. Um, that's what makes us different than other stores where we're gonna have a lot of like the basics, bearded dragons, leopard geckos, ball pythons, uh, but we also import, you know, things like this. Uh, I may not know the specific care details for this guy, but we've been keeping him very similar to a ball python. He's feeding on mice and he's doing really good. Um, this type of snake is kind of difficult to get in. Uh, from the two years that we've been doing this import stuff, this is the only one we've ever been able to actually bring in. So there's right, still a lot of information really that we don't really know about this type of snake that we have to learn from just trial and error. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Man, yeah, you don't see a lot of these in reptile shops at all. I saw something else really cool. What did Cat see over here? A vine snake, an Asian vine snake. Yeah, he he's over there. so awesome. Yeah, he's I've never there. seen one of those in person. So. We are going to get to that vine snake, and then will you show it to us when we get there? Yes. Cool. And I got this guy. And oh you got gosh. this guy. He's beautiful. God, they really are. I mean, they're just gorgeous. Hey, Dan the Batman. We're going to go over and see some turtles. Would you like to join us? Please. Let us do it. We have a whole section of turtles over here. Oh, yeah. So they actually have a really good selection of some really freaking cool species. First of all, one of my all-time favorites, common musk. They stay small. They're personable. They're relatively inexpensive. They're relatively common. They can take a variety of water parameters. Just spitting nerd turtle facts. These guys live in the gunkiest, dirtiest, yeah. cruddiest yeah. Yep. And they water, love, they love and they thrive. It. Yeah, and they're less destructive than other species, because some other species, like my lovely terrapins, will just shred any plants, anything that you put in there with them. Yeah. And also, they're teeny tiny when they're babies, and they're so cute. You can eat it by accident. Right. Like, if you're eating gummy bears, and this falls in the bag, it's gone. If you're eating Mike and Ikes, do not have those Mike and Ikes near this guy. Literally. If you are eating raisins, do not have this guy near your raisins. Grapes, right out. M&M's. M&M's is a good one. M&M's, right out. Keep those M&M's away from this little guy. Prunes. Prunes. I don't know anyone who eats prunes. But. My grandfather, he has two and he's old in Italian, he goes, hey, keep me regular, you know? <laughs> That's the last man eating prunes. Are you talking about prunes or musk turtles? <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. All right, Dan, let's pick out one more turtle to see here. What is your favorite, second favorite one here, I guess? I'm a little sucker uh -huh. because when I was younger, these guys were not really readily available, kind of a new morph, and I'm not a morph guy, but I got a little soft spot for the caramel pink albino red ear sliders. They used to be like two grand per baby. A couple years, eh, many years ago, I forget that I'm elderly now yes um and yeah. so they're just a red ear slider i say just um but they are the coolest combination of colors they're pink and albino and caramel combined uh they're freaking sweet same care requirements as a normal red ear slider but color morph gone crazy and it's i geek out because when i was younger i look at them like maybe someday you're right and now they're so readily available like here wow I love the black outline around those mm -hmm. scoots. I mean, it just gives this turtle so much character. The eyes too, how they yeah. pop. So beautiful. Yeah, that is a cute little turtle. All right, Dan, we'll think. Oh, 
he did the b Batman thing. The b, -b, 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 -b Batman thing. Did you hear it? Did you hear me go b b b b b b b Did you hear me? Yeah. Say it. b b b b Batman. Yeah. Dan, you're still here. Say b b b b Batman like I did. Oh, even better than me. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that, b b b b Batman. All right. We're moving on down here. This is my favorite section of the whole store right here. Okay. And it starts with not up there, but down. Doink. Here they are. This is their little family of Gidgey skinks. Oh, Gidgeys. I love these guys. Yeah, so these guys live in groups. Uh, they take care of their babies. They stay very close to rocks for the most part. And if their babies are born uh, not great, they eat them. Yes. They also help each other shed. So the scales, they have a whole bunch of spikes. So the shed gets stuck very, very easily. So other skinks come around and they peel it off very gently. Yep. And that's how they end up and shedding they for the And they get parasites off of each other. Yep. Wow, I gotta see this guy. Come yeah. here. Yeah, take him right there. So one of the coolest things about Gigi skinks is that tail right there. And they have, it's like petting a dog. If you pet him this way, you're fine, but you can't pet him that way because his sharp scales actually go backwards and that's a defense mechanism. So where we found these in Australia, they were in the crevice of rocks. So what these guys would do when you approach them, when you see them sunning on a rock in Australia, is they'll retreat into the first crevice they can find and they will use those scales to kind of lock themselves in that crevice so that you or a predator cannot pull them out of that security. And they use that tail to block any entrances just like the first lizard that we saw earlier in this video. These are just absolutely incredible Australian lizards. All right, now Yoshi Hello. is going to show us something cool here. Yes, yeah, so on the Australia skink situation, we have a new oh, famous lizard. Yeah, look at that. An ivory blue tongue. So these guys are awesome. I'm not just saying that because I'm heavily invested in them, but I mean, for the most part, it is a white lizard, but it's something that we don't get a lot in Northern blue tongues, which is mutations. It's a recessive mutation. You know, a lot of the blue tongues in captivity right now in the United States, because we can't bring any new blood. It's a lot of line bred stuff. So this offers, you know, blue tongue breeders something to play with. Absolutely it does. Yeah, there are so many morphs of these in Australia by Australian breeders that we may never see here in the United States or in Europe. But when I get over to Australia, I love going over to blue tongue breeders and showing off what they've got because they are now light years ahead of blue tongue breeding than we are. But we do have a few morphs of blue tongues that we can work with, and this is one of them, the ivory blue tongue. Hey, didn't you pick an ivory blue tongue to be the Rattalon Award winner at one of the expos? That was the Schomburg Show. That was the Schomburg yeah. Show. Well, that was a baby. Yeah, I've never seen a big one. And this is what they look like as big. They are beautiful. All right, so as Kat is over there, um, going to walk out of the store with that blue tongue, we are going to distract the staff with what's in here so that Kat can make her escape. You gave it back. I told you to. Where are you? So we got this wily little guy out. This is obviously a T-positive albino water monitor. You can tell because it has that kind of caramel hue to it, where if it was albino, it would be much more yellow. Look at that, just sitting on your hands so nicely like that. But yeah, so there's T positive and there's T negative. I think it's one of the better morphs if you're looking for like a larger lizard water monitor. Uh, these guys tend to be really tame out of the egg and have really good personalities. Now he's just moving a lot, but has no intention to bite. It could be because they may not see as well but the T positives tend to have better eyesight than the T negatives, That's but this true. guy's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and once he figures out what's going on, comes right down, very handleable. These are like the perfect pet monitor lizard. They really are. All right, Kat, it is now time for you to reveal what we have mentioned before, and that is... Yeah, it's South American. The, okay, South American vine snake. And usually I, I know about the Asians, but this is actually a South American vine snake and they are bigger than the Asian vine snakes. That is correct. And they are lizard eaters. That is correct. So there are vine snakes literally all over the world, even here in the United States. And this is a giant vine snake. There you go. You barely feel it, it's like a feather. Yep, <laughs> they're so light. And these, I don't know if you knew this or not, but these are the hardest snakes in the world to get focus on. <laughs> don't they have like weird pupils too? Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. They actually have vertical yeah. pupils, which is why a lot of people think that like these are venomous because, <laughs> because venomous snakes 
have vertical pupils. Well, this is one of those snakes that has vertical pupils. Now this is mildly venomous, rear fanged, but its bite can't hurt you. It can only hurt an anole and cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is it about these snakes that you absolutely love other than everything? Um, that is a really hard question. Mm, isn't and it? That's why I, I asked I think it. my answer would be that their tongue is also green. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. And they have really weird tongues too. They just kind of hold it out for a long time. Well, guys, this is an awesome shop that you have here. I love these little shops in the world like this because you can always find some really amazing hidden gems in there. Mm -hmm. I wish we had time to like go through every single one of these enclosures like uh, Dan the Bat Turtle Man is over there. Um, you, you have... I would, I would frisk him on the way out. He probably has snakes in that suit. So guys, as always, real quick, I just want to thank all my Patreon supporters. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, that link is in the description below. Blah, 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 blah. For as little as $3 a month, you can get Rattle on Swag, early access to my videos. You can see more of Dan the Turtle Batman, maybe, on Patreon. I don't know. So guys, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter and further help me educate people about these amazing reptiles on this channel, that link is in the description below. Go check it out. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on. Rattle on. I was a little late on that one. <laughs>